Hi everyone, welcome back to another Simple Planes video. In this video, I have quite a bit to talk about for the SWL120 fuselage. So, let's get started. For the last four weeks, I've actually been on a vacation, so that's why I haven't uploaded any videos. I have, however, done quite a bit of work on the SWL120. So much work, in fact, I'm going to have to make two videos, one for the fuselage and one for the interior and cockpit. In this video, I'm going to talk about the updates for the fuselage, and I'll explain interior updates and cockpit updates in next week's video. Quick teaser, this is some footage of the flight management computer I've been coding for the cockpit. So anyways, the fuselage. Since my last video, the fuselage has been finished, with a few details added, and then exported to be added back in as one part in a mod. I've kinda assembled two files, the fuselage with mods and the fuselage with no mods. These files have significant differences, however each is a somewhat complete fuselage for the s 120 with landing gear, wings, and engines. The plan, as I've mentioned in previous videos, is to have two core versions of the s 120 mods and no mods. What I've done, as I've explained earlier, is assemble, in a way, a lot of the separate parts I had into two files, one for a modded fuselage, and the other for a non-modded fuselage. The wings actually have most of the weight for the fuselage, about weight, since I needed the flight model to be the same for both versions, I placed the landing gear on both versions of the wings, mods and no mods. I then tuned the mass scale with a block to be exactly 22,000 pounds, so the wings had some mass, and then I added block to make it exactly 22,000 pounds. Then I moved that block around in both files to have the center of mass be the same location for both files. So the block itself was in a different location, but the overall center of mass was the same. The actual fuselage itself has no mass, so the wings had most of the mass, as I've just mentioned. I then added the modded wings to the modded fuselage, then the non-modded wings to the non-modded fuselage. I have also created modded and non-modded versions of the engines, and the tail, with the base stabilizers without control surfaces being part of the fuselage in the modded fuselage part. So you can see here, the base part of the wing and the base horizontal stabilizers without the control surfaces are part of the single part for the fuselage. Another new part is the cargo bays. The last time you saw the fuselage, I just had some simple doors, which are these doors here, which could be opened with Activate 1. But now, I have a full cargo bay and realistic door controls. Now I said I was going to do that in my last video, and I've done that. So, I can unlock the door, then we can open the door. And you have to hold this down with the button for the door to open. There's also some lights which show how far the door is opened. And then it starts movement when the door is fully opened. There's a small interior here. These are quite a lot of parts, like 200 per cargo bay. But this is all one part. So this is actually the mods version of the cargo bay. I did create a no mods version for some reason. But... I think I decided to not include it because I wanted the non-modded version to have as little parts as possible because the non-modded wings are over a thousand parts and that already makes the non-modded version, even though it has less details than the modded version, be over a thousand parts. The non-modded version is, I think it's around a thousand five hundred now, even with a very simple fuselage. So I decided to just not include this. So the non-modded version doesn't even have cargo doors. Now about these controls. In real life, I think there would be some extra controls to th like move cargo containers around and so on. I just didn't include them. There are also a few small details that have do not open written on them. In real life, that would be with there's some cabling behind that. But of course, there's nothing here because they're hidden. There's also these little bars cargo containers would be attached to after loading. That's it for the cargo bay. There's also a few small details, such as these small fins here. These will be radio antennas in real life. And over by the nose here, there are some pitot tubes, 
they gather information like the static air pressure, which is used for calculating altitude, and there's also angle of attack vanes. These do in fact work, and pilot tubes don't move, so they just are static models. I'll just try and get a demonstration of that angle of attack vein. You can sort of see it moving. Actually, let's try and get a better view. One sec. Here's a pretty good view. So as I move the plane around, you can see them moving. And yes, this plane can in fact fly now. I will show you the flight model and what I did in just a bit. In my last video, I said the tail might be finished, and that is very much the case. The tail now has a rudder, like in the last video, it had just an airfoil. And there's also a lot of code, which controls the behavior when there's wind and hydraulics are off. Plus I have some wind, well currently there's no wind. When hydraulics are off in a real plane, there's no pressure in the system, so the control surfaces, at least the ones that aren't like vertical like the tail, would go down to the maximum angle deflection downwards. They'd stay there because there's nothing to control them. Except when there's wind, you'd assume, as the wind speed increases, they would then go up to their like normal position. You can't, I can't control this if I can't really see it, but if but I'm currently trying to get them to pitch up or down. Same for yaw. There's no inputs that work right now. Except wind can control all of these control surfaces. For the elevators, it's pretty simple. There's basically just some speed. So, zero miles an hour of wind. They're just down. As they increase the speed, they slowly go up until they're at the normal, I make it's like angle deflection. And for the rudder, it does the same thing, except since it's vertical, if I turn off the wind, it stays where it is. So the wind speed controls how fast the rudder will match the ideal, or the target, angle of slip. So if I have a lot of wind, you can see it goes to about there fast, but if I have slow wind, you can see it moves slower. The alevons in the wing do the same thing too. So if I have no wind, they're down. And then as I increase the speed, I think it cuts off at about 50 something. Then they are not deflected down at all. And then of course, let's say I have the rudder, the offset because the wind's not 180 degrees. So the rudder's moving, ignore the plane moving. And then there's like no wind now. So let's say it's all like this. If I activate hydraulics, everything goes back to normal. I can control them. No hydraulics. And everything's down. It's just a little behavior I decided to add just to make it a little more realistic. The main gear has been finished for quite some time now because I made the wings a while ago and I remade the landing gear to go with the wings a while ago. However, I left the nose gear alone, I don't know why, I just did. For a long time, then I was finishing the fuselage and I decided to finish the nose gear and add it. So I've added a lot of details. I've also decided to, instead of having these like six main gear doors, I grouped them together into two gear doors, or really four gear doors I guess. Just so it was a little more realistic. I also added this different color inside than outside, as well as just a lot more details. And also the mechanism of attraction changed from just a rotator here, to the rotator actually being here. And also the lights, they were active whenever the gear is down, and the light input, which is currently just activate 8, but I'll change that to the cockpit switches later, is on. Some other details on the nose gear include this thing which is a simplified version of how the nose gear turns using hydraulic pistons and there's also this tow hook here which is how push back tugs attached to the nose gear to push the plane back so now for the flight model up to this point this plane has really been just a bunch of static parts which looked and moved but they didn't actually provide any function they just looked like a plane so what I've done is I've just had two primary wings up here two wings at the back and a tail, like, like it's a normal plane really. And then I have 
No, it's, not, it's hard to see here, but there were three control surfaces. One is the outboard aileron, then there's the inboard aileron, then there's the flaps. This is so you have all the actual effects like the outboard aileron locking about a certain speed, and then the inboard one, all of the effects the control surfaces would have are simulated. The engines have a complex startup sequence, so what I did is I had some variables which set the simulated engine start dial to start after time is a certain amount. So that way, I also start one engine and then the other, and why I did that, I just did. That will, of course, be changed back to the cockpit inputs later. I just did it so I didn't have to click something in the cockpit or put a cockpit in just to test it. I also put some engine thrust in. So right now I'm starting the left engine, but well, I'm not starting it, it just started by itself. Then we're starting the right engine. If you watched my previous engine video, you'll know there's a hot start feature. That happens here because the fuel's always set to on in the variables. So for the engine thrust, the engine here is not actually the engine that provides the thrust. It's an engine that I guess doesn't actually provide sound either. Like it, it provides sound, but it's not going to be the final sound for the engine. The actual engines which provide thrust, well, you can't really see them again. But there's two small engines of the same type. One's pointing forwards, one's pointing backwards. The forward one has some code which ha makes it have some power when the engines are idling. And this is all taken directly from the engine M1 variable, which is again explained in my engine coding video. So that's vital. And then for the th throttle part, since M1 is already at, I think it's 25%, I didn't want to have 25% of the thrust on when the uh, engine is just idling. So I had some code which made the actual simulated thrust be like, I don't know, it was like 5% or something. And then the power range you get from throttle is 95%. So. 5% to 100% when you have full throttle. For reverse, the simulated thrust is the same as the forward thrust but without the idling. However, because the reverse thrust itself only gets the engine up to about 70%, that's the thrust to get on reverse. I also bumped the power multiplier of that engine which on the reverse thrust down a bit from the forward engine. So like 60% for reverse thrust is less power than 60% for forward thrust. But it's definitely there, you can definitely use it. it. Has some effect. I'm still changing this flight model, but I think this is like it's acceptable. It's probably not the best it could be, but it's acceptable. I'm trying to get the takeoff speed to be two hundred knots with flap setting one. Some other code I had to do for the engines is some code which makes the engines have not much power at sea level for takeoff, so 100% power doesn't have like instantly rev the plane up to like 500 knots. Except at cruise, you want to cruise at 580 knots at like 60% engine power. So I wrote some code which makes the engines I think it's five times as powerful when you're at a cruising altitude. And it's also slightly based off ASB2. And also the way I'm doing wing flux here is I have my like what I call physics wing here. I'll put its lift force to a variable, and then that variable is used with some di divider into two rotators for the two wing segments. It's hard to really see, and I'm just moving the cameras around as well. Here you go. Here's a static view. I'll just show you a landing.
so you would have noticed I only use flap setting too, that's because the right final approach is just too high for a realistic landing. So the actual landing speed with four flaps would be somewhere around 180 to 160 knots. And with that, not my best landing, but a landing, that brings this video to an end. I hope you enjoyed. And in my next video, I will definitely be showing you the interior updates. Here's a quick look. They have passenger signs now, like fast seat belts and no smoking. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!